All right, so really briefly, I want to cover the Amazon drop shipping policy. Now, really with Amazon, you're only technically supposed to use wholesale suppliers, okay? But at the very least, you want to use obs obscure suppliers, you know, so that means like not Walmart, not Home Depot, and not normal typical reseller or retailers like, you know, everybody else uses, right? If you hop on those listings, for example, I'm going to show you a tutorial of how you can reverse engineer private label brands on Amazon to obviously, just like we did on eBay, right? To find drop shippers that are, you know, drop shipping specific items like Mainstays, for example, right? Mainstays is a Walmart private label brand. I will show you how to actually go about doing that so that you can find other drop shippers on the platform and then check out their stores, reverse engineer their other listings, obviously, that aren't Walmart listings and then make money that way, okay? I will also show you other tutorials of how you can do this using, you know, uh, software like Source Mogul and stuff like that. So there's a number of ways to actually find, you know, obscure suppliers if you don't want to start with wholesale suppliers. Ultimately, though, just like on Facebook Marketplace, just like on any other platform, your end goal, right, what you should be working towards is to move directly, in, not directly, that's the wrong word, move eventually into wholesale because that's the only sustainable long-term way to do this, right? Uh, so on on Amazon, for example, I'm not saying you can't get away with drop shipping Walmart, right? I'm not saying you can't get away with drop shipping Home Depot, for example. But it's a recipe for disaster. It's an and it's very, very, very risky. Okay, at the very least, you want to be using obscure suppliers that are not your typical suppliers. Okay, that doesn't mean that you can't hop on and make a quick buck on some of those other ones. You can. But I do not recommend it, so I want to hit that home. Proceed down those roads with caution if you're going to do that, okay? I would recommend, first and foremost, the best thing you can do, like I said, is wholesale suppliers. We're going to cover the dropshipping policy here in a second. Uh, and then the next best thing is if you aren't ready for wholesale yet, do it from other obscure uh, retailers that are, you know, not your typical ones. And then make sure that you keep your metrics good. Make sure, literally double and triple check everything, that you have the right exact product. Because the, the way that you're going to run into an issue is if you drop ship from a supplier like Best Buy, for example, right? Which isn't necessarily like an obscure supplier, but it's not your typical, you know, top three or four that most people use, right? So if you drop ship from a supplier like Best Buy, for example, you want to double, triple, and even quadruple check to make sure that the item you're drop shipping from, from Best Buy, for example, is the exact item as the product detail page you're drop shipping it onto on Amazon, okay? You want to make sure that the UPC or the product identifier is the same, right? You want to make sure that the model's the same, the variation's the same. It is the same exact thing. It's not just looking very similar because that's when you're going to run into an issue. If you drop ship a product from a specific retailer to a customer and the customer gets a product that they were not expecting because maybe it's a different variation or something along those lines, that's typically when they're gonna report it and you'll run into an issue, okay? So as long as you're making sure that you're shipping out fast and you're dropping your tracking numbers quickly and you're keeping track of everything via the spreadsheets like I've shown you, and on top of that, you are making sure double, quadruple, you know, triple checking, whatever, uh, that the items that you're drop shipping are the same exact items, you should be fine, okay? But that said, your end goal should be to move into wholesale. Now, the Amazon drop shipping policy, okay, is drop shipping or allowing a third party to fulfill orders to customers on your behalf is generally acceptable. If you intend to fulfill orders using a drop shipper, you must always do these things, okay? So be the seller of records on your products and identify yourself as the seller of the products on packing slips, invoices, external packaging and other information uh, or provided in connection with them, okay? So that's why I recommend wholesale suppliers because wholesale suppliers will set this relationship up with you, which will provide an invoice or not provide an invoice, obviously, because for example, like let's say you're getting, uh, you're delivering your dropshipping from Best Buy, you might face the invoice issue. If you're dropshipping from somewhere like, you know, Walmart, you might again face the invoice issue, not to mention that it might come on a branded box with their branded, you know, th their brand on it, okay? And so that is what Amazon wants to avoid okay they don't want you know their people buying stuff on their platform and then obviously receiving a box with a different brand on it that's what they're trying to avoid or receiving an invoice with somebody else in somebody other company that you know is clearly you know being dropshipped from uh on that box or in that invoice okay and so that's why wholesale suppliers are what's recommended it's not like they specifically say, hey, we only let like, we only let wholesale suppliers uh, be who you dropship from. 
but they're the ones that will set that relationship up with you and provide invoices and packing slips and stuff like that with your name on it, or at the very least, not provide one with any other name on it. You also, obviously, if you're doing FBM, which is how you're going to drop ship, you're not shipping it into FBA. So Amazon, all the metrics aren't falling on Amazon. They're not doing the customer service. They're not processing returns or refunds. So you are going to be responsible for those. And that's something that you won't really face too much of in the beginning. But as you scale and you're doing a lot, you will face a lot of, okay? So you need to be doing that. You need to be staying on top of that. A, because you want happy customers and good metrics, but also because the responsibility falls on you when you're doing FBM and you're, when you're dropshipping, okay? And you all, obviously, just like anything else, you want to, you know, comply with all their, all their terms of your seller agreement. So some examples of, of dropshipping, obviously, that aren't permitted, you can read them here, but like purchasing from another online retailer, like Walmart, for example, if the shipment doesn't directly identify you as a seller of record or Obviously, you don't appear on the packing slip or invoice or something like that. Or shipping orders with packing slips, invoices, external packaging, uh, indicating a seller name or contact information other than your own. Okay, so we just covered that. I wanted to hit that home. It's not like you're only, like in their drop shipping policy, you're only allowed to use wholesale suppliers. But the main thing there is they want to avoid the invoices and they want to avoid you shipping and using brands from other online retailers, Okay. Eventually, you should be moving into wholesale. And again, like I said, you want to make sure, make sure that your metrics are all good, you're shipping out on time. And on top of it, the most and, and the key thing here and most important thing is to make sure that your products match up.